the, yes, they're afraid of the of the infection of the coronavirus, um, as well as HIV, and also the amount of violence. But they, there is no other way of them uh, getting any funds. South Africa, we have we have vast um, inequalities as a country in general. What COVID-19 has done is to 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 highlight the the huge gap. The system of prostitution bears the face of poor black and disadvantaged women in South Africa. When people need to keep social distancing, it's not possible with the way um, prostituted persons are living or where they live. Um, currently in the U.S., the legislative model that we have in place for prostitution is full criminalization. The majority of the women who are prostituted are the ones who are criminalized. The media is also claiming that prostitution business is down by 80%. That is also false. It is actually business as usual. Sex buyers are actually using COVID-19 as a means to continue to manipulate and further exploit the, the already vulnerable population that they've been exploiting. Um, our model here in Argentina is legal but pimping is criminalizing. The government uh, sent a lot of uh, assistance that these assistance need the victims is for this uh, pimping lobby. These organizations make a very hard uh, lobby to regular prostitution in, in our country. Have a very seductor discourse about prostitution like a war. The women that are victims in this system of prostitution uh, is impossible access for this assistance and service. So a lot of sex buyers are using COVID-19 as a way to say, hey, I know that you're financially struggling, engage in prostitution with me so I can quote unquote help you out. And the media is not shedding light on that. Usually rich white men with disposable and discretionary income that targets individuals that are black and brown, that live marginalized, that are from foster care, that identify on the LGBT spectrum. And this gives then an opportunity for the brothel keepers, the pimps, the johns to be exploiting these women and they cannot report because these places are not supposed to be open to begin with. But we are also um, hearing a lot of prostituted persons being abused um, by, by police also in the streets, um, even though everybody else, domestic workers, um, employers and other people are encouraged to be supporting um, whoever it is that is providing services to them during this time. The Johns are not doing anything to support women that they tend to be advocating for. Prostitution is not a war. It's a violation of human rights and uh, a torture, of course. Uh, Thousands of bodies of women around the world and in, in Latin America are using to break our sexual in integrity um, all the day. Equality model was first pioneered in Sweden in 1999, continues to criminalize or penalize sex buying, pimping, brothel keeping, and other parties, but it decriminalizes the prostituted person, irregardless of whether they are men, women from the LGBTIQ community, also obliges the government to support those who are prostituted to be able to exit the system of prostitution, but at the same time also investing in the most marginalized to prevent new entry and new recruitment into the system of prostitution.
One of my favorite things about this model is that it's the only model of its kind that focuses on aftercare services because often you hear this great debate between full legalization, full decriminalization, none of them focus on aftercare services, right? You can take the person out of prostitution, whether you arrest them, whether you decriminalize them, but then what? There is no funding allocated for resources to prevent us from relapsing and to prevent us falling back into all of the vulnerabilities that put us in prostitution in the first place. Prostitution is a system that thrives on other oppressive systems, patriarchy, capitalism, and misogyny. I personally believe that it is our government's responsibility to attend to this. And I think that COVID-19 is, is the perfect opportunity to have the governments intervening. We're going to continue to remain stagnant if changes aren't made. Our respective governments, especially the government of South Africa, does um, really need to sit down and speak to us and hear us out to hear what it is that we, we, we really want. Condoms do not change our fate. You may still provide us condoms, but they still leave us poor, vulnerable, disadvantaged, and uh, they, they open us to the exploitation. And um, we are constantly at the mercy of the men who abuse us, who purchase sexual access to our bodies. So the government's responsibility to right now, as it, um, it, 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 it prepares to, to, to have a response on gender-based violence, having declared um, before COVID-19, GBV as a crisis in this country, to include the system of prostitution in those interventions. No call to action is too small. Even if that's questioning or challenging every little thing you see or read, fostering more of these conversations at your dinner tables, watching the language that you use, being mindful that prostitution is not how it's being advertised. We have a lot of work to do, but I definitely think that it can get done.